Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have a chance, head down into the show notes. We're going to include all the links to all the curriculum and the books and ideas that we're going to be talking about today, as well as a couple links to our Gumroad account um, if you're looking for any of our Around the World Journey resources, as well as links to leave us a review. It's one of the great ways for other humans uh, to find us and know about us and, and learn about us, as well as you sharing. See what I've talked about, the the lady in the in the in the shopping uh, line, the the stranger in the elevator. How about when you come to a full stop at a four-way street? You can lean out of your window and just start screaming homeschool together. That won't draw any attention. I think the dad jokes are getting worse. Well, it's, it's late. It's late. We've had He's had a long day, folks. We're potty training, potty training the, the little one, and he was home all day while I was visiting a friend who's uh, serious hours. Stuck, in, stuck in her house with her little baby. And, and I'm not getting time and a half. What the heck? I came home and yeah, I think you've had a long one. I, I think it's been a long day for you. It has been anyway. So <laughs> as we talked about last week, we were talking about homeschool in the summer. Um, and it was kind of an extension off of the episode that we had, I think last, last year leading into the summer, we talked about homeschooling through the summer. Um, this episode was kind of the part two that we kind of teased in the first episode where we were going to talk about what we're going to be doing in the homeschool this, this summer. Yeah. I know people Uh, are interested in what our plan is. So uh, they want to, the peeps want to know what we're doing. They're always (laughs) interviewing other people about what they're doing. They have people that want to know what we're doing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it changes a lot. You know, we move through a lot of things. Yeah, you know, so uh, th- this summer, um, I've taught my my daughter how to drive the big John Deere, and we're gonna go plow and and raise pigs. What? Yeah, that's what I, you know. I've been, it's, I've been, it's really late, everyone. I'm gonna apologize. Yeah, no. no, anyway. So, what we're gonna be doing this summer is, I think, and kind of an extension of what we're doing right now, um, with a lot of respect of of around the learning to read, um, our pro- our wonderful progress that we've been doing in math, um, but also taking a little bit of a time to. Um, dive into some specific um, topics that we really, really like, especially around the Harry Potter unit study. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. We kind of teased that, I think, a week or two ago with the Harry Potter Build Your Library interview with... with, with Jessica with Weeks. Jessica Weeks. Thank you. I'm Ariel knows how terrible I am with names. The lady from a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go back and see. She had yeah. done the Build Your Library Harry Potter unit study, and she gave us a, a rundown on her experience with that. I'll so make that's sure, something I'll make sure you're to link in. that in. I'll make sure to link that in the show notes yeah. as well. So let's talk a little bit about the English language that we're going to be doing. Um, the big thing that we've done is we've just finished the um, Explode the Code book one yep and we're um, gonna have a review coming up we have with a that nice shortly review, a review coming up with that probably next week maybe the week after um we're going through basically what that book was what our experience was mm-hmm. why we chose it why we're excited about it and i think why we're going to continue using it going forward you know maybe just to take a step back and get a little bit more ten thousand foot view one of the things that we've been doing that i think is very notable is that we've been using multiple curriculums mm-hmm. um and then using them as review and mastery elements. So when we've completed a a curriculum, we've gone ahead and started maybe a second curriculum at the same level, the learner level, whether that's like, for example, all about reading and then doing Explode the Code as a review or teach your child to learn in 100 lessons as a review and really driving home that that idea of mastery. It's one of been one of the things that we've um, seen to be kind of a deficit in our daughter's um, you know, the way she thinks and and learns and everything. She needs to see things multiple times. She needs to be exposed to the same content in multiple different ways. And just completing the curriculum is not sufficient enough for her to do that. Yeah, we really felt like just because she, you know, made it through all about reading level one um, and, you know, she just because she completed it, 
technically, I, I feel like if she were in a public school setting, it'd be like, well, she completed it. And now we're moving so on good. to level two. And with every step we would take forward, her ability to do it would decrease and her confidence would decrease because yeah. eventually it would catch up that she really hasn't mastered the earlier topics. So we felt like uh, getting some different resources and maybe coming at things from different angles was a really good way to make sure that before we started the next level, she was really ready exactly. um, and, and not just we finished the curriculum ready <laughs> but but I, I think that that's something that we we get to do it's a one of the perks I think of homeschooling, homeschooling. maybe maybe more the perk a vital element that we get to really assess our kids mm -hmm. really know what level they're at not what uh, a book tells us or hey they took yeah. a test and they got a good score on it so yep they're ready to go to the next one you know that's a fantastic point because it, that is that is the benefit of a uh, of being the educator and being there and you know not having to use tests as a form of assessment actually seeing your child using the skills that they're learning um, completing the exercises doing the activities whatever it might be you can see whether or not they're actually getting it and you're not getting a third hand report from you know another educator who maybe doesn't spend as much time with your kid as you do on a day-to-day -day basis you know maybe it's more of group activity in a kindergarten or first grade class whether it's in a private or a public school they're not getting that one-on-one -on -one experience and that you're getting i think that's you know, that's a great point because that is something that we're seeing and it's allowing us to adapt and change you know from my standpoint from my career you know, doing a lot of software development, one of the best ways that we developed software was to do micro corrections along the way and that we use more agile design frameworks in order to do that. And being agile and being adaptive and being able to pivot is something that, you know, I have always internalized within everything that I do that I don't like to do, you know, to commit to doing some big project and then finding out at the end it was the wrong path. I, I do like the micro corrections along the way. And mm -hmm. homeschooling is a good example of being able to do that. You know, when we're sitting there making changes on, you know, what curriculums we're doing, you know, strategies, tactics, and tools, you know, all f filtering into each other, um, really putting that all into practice, I think is something that, you know, we are afforded as homeschoolers and being able to do that. And that is something we did about two and a half, was about two and a half months ago. We made a shift to pause the all about reading level two um, we had just just started it. We had just started it, and I was kind of coupling it along with the end of the um, all about I'll teach your child to learn in a hundred lessons. I'll just I will now permanently refer to it as hundred lessons, <laughs> um, the hundred lessons curriculum. We were nearing the end of that, and I was starting to do some of the early all about reading lessons because, believe it or not, there was some overlap there. That those first couple of lessons in the all about reading level two was already had already been covered in the hundred lessons, and I thought very you know, at a very, you know, confident level that my daughter understood that. So I said, oh, let's just do the first couple of lessons here and we'll kind of do them together. And that was okay. But then we kind of hit a wall and it was a little bit of a, a frustration kind of leaking in. And we made the ch choice to kind of, I ended, I think the hundred lessons at like 98. So we essentially finished it. And then uh, we made this pivot to say, we're going to focus on reading and fluency and and confidence i think that's i've said this a number yeah, of times she still wasn't enjoying it that the confidence being able to read with confidence that she, you know she's able to do these things and have do these things with confidence as opposed to just decoding her way through life um she yeah. she needs to be able to, to learn to read sight words um be able to be comfortable with what she's reading um and we we said okay we're not seeing what we're what we want to see so let's pull it back calm it down we're already ahead based on, you know, we, we went into our parent partnership. We talked to one of the reading coordinators and she says, well, you know, you guys are based, she's basically a, at a first grade level right now. So you have time. And that's one yeah. of the great things with homeschooling is that we have time, we're ahead. So why don't we take the time to yeah. get her to be comfortable in what we're doing? And that was kind of the big change that we've done in the last few months. Not that we're going to stop all about reading. I'm actually itching to get back into it. Um, but we're going to do that when she's ready. Um, and we're going to give her a couple more months here. And that's part yeah. of our plan that we've been doing, which was um, basically doing a lot of early readers, um, going back to the All About Reading blue books. So along with the All About Reading, they give you these wonderful short story books that I think we thoroughly trashed as boring. 
um, <laughs> long time ago. We have now gone back to them. They're, they get better. They Actually, you know what? The funny thing is they really do get better. Like, yeah, once they, they can better. read more words, they do get better. Yeah, it's 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 really that hard thing of like, you know, it's kind of like the Bob books where they're they're really frustrating at the, the end. The Bob books are seriously boring. Yeah, they though. are. Um, but, and we've read a lot of them now. We can her. say that with authority. <laughs> we have. Um, but so I've actually had her go back and begin to read those over again. And mm-hmm. so she's confident and excited because she can read those and they're actually fairly easy for her. So I want to, I want her to spend enough time with reading short stories and books that are exciting and fun and easy. Um, she's, she's a, she's a very smart young girl who loves to thrive on six, have success and success yeah. breeds confidence for her. And that's really in her wheelhouse. And so the, the big thing for us is to really focus on providing a lot of confidence building exercises um, so that she can move forward when to more challenging things, mm-hmm. right? And so that's what we've been focusing on, doing a lot of early readers. And along with that, we did the Explode the Code. Um, the, I think it was book one. Yep, we did book one. It, it went really well. About which is kindergarten, which essentially. Which is essentially kindergarten. So again, another review where she's done the same material over again. And she was ripping through that. Like it was. Yeah, she felt really good about herself. She felt really good about herself. They were different kinds of exercises than she had done in either 100 Lessons or All About Reading. So it was really good. You know, those workbooks are very affordable. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a. It was a really good confidence builder for her. So now that we've just finished Explode the Code book one. We're going to just fold right into the, what is it? The, 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 so it's Beyond the Code, beyond the code book yes. one. So so the Explode the Code is all about decoding words. It's it's the phonics based. Then uh, Beyond the Code is fluency um, and, re- and reading comprehension. So we're going to do Explode the Code book one over the summer and see how she does with that. We're literally going to be starting it like next week. So Beyond the Code, book one. Yeah, Beyond the Code. Beyond the Code, book one. Yeah, book yeah. one. We so, just, yeah, we just, I think we just got it today. Um, yeah, so we're so. excited. We were looking through it today. It looked really good. So we're excited to actually, I'm probably going to begin that here in the next day or two. Yeah, so gonna that's going to carry us yeah. through a bit of the summer. We're also going to take that 100 Lessons book and reread some of the stories from that. Just the stories, not do all the lessons. Believe it or not, that book is I think it's like twenty bucks you can get on Amazon. And get you can it, get it way cheaper. Way, way used. cheaper than that. Use. Yeah. Um, it's legitimate. I think the first fifteen lessons might be pretty cheap on the story wise, but there's about fifty really good early reader short stories in there. Yeah. And if you think about how much you're going to drop on ten Bob books or some Usborne reader set, twenty dollars to get you know, 50 really good short stories that are all phonetic based, Mm -hmm. um, that have that, that, that progress really nicely over time. That's kind of like a little hidden gem right there. Yeah. We're going to link the book in in our show notes. We're going to use that to our advantage and have her go back and reread those stories. Cause even within the hundred lessons, they actually have you reread stories, especially in the later half of the book. They actually have you coming back because they take away a lot of the, they use some, uh, interesting notation. Yeah, that's the one thing yeah. I would say about it. I don't think that you can really pick up that book and just use it as an early reader supplement yeah. if you're using another program because they do use some some what will look like strange notation if you're not doing the lessons. It's actually but very intuitive notation. It, but is. it is. We but, felt that that book was a really great review after doing All About Reading Level mm-hmm. 1. Then we did the 100 lessons and just kind of retrod that ground from a different perspective and with this different notation. And our daughter understood. She really grasped the concepts so much deeper by having both of those pieces. It's like it's like the the all about reading is this theoretical solid foundational piece. It's just it's phonics from the beginning. It's amazing. Yeah, and it's very comprehensive, right? Yeah. And then and then you can stack these other things on top of it, like the hundred lessons, like the Explode the Code series and Beyond mm-hmm. the Code. Um you know, like these other decodable workbooks. And and they all just kind of um, they kind of build on this great foundation that I think All About Reading gave us. So yeah. it's funny because we tell people like, oh, we're doing Explode the Code. And they're like, oh, did you abandon All About Reading? It's like, no, all these things are working in in conjunction, right? We're, I, I want to build a skyscraper, but I'm trying to build a really g- a good basement, a good first floor, a good yeah. second floor. You know, we're really trying to build a strong tower. So yeah, I really feel like what we're doing right now, this whole like confidence building is really like to go with your metaphors, we're, like we're pouring the concrete. We've done all the rebar yeah. work. We're starting to have the solid foundation. I think that's going to really pay forward right so our hope is to continue with this for another maybe a month or two maybe towards the end of june um maybe early july we'll be done 
with this kind of hardening in mm-hmm. a, in some respects um, idea of you know getting the confidence into her. And then I think we're going to pick up with all about reading sometime in the midsummer. Yeah. And at the rate, because I've looked at the book, we're going to move pretty fast through the first half of that book because it's stuff she knows right now. Mm-hmm. It's really just the confidence in reading the short stories that come along with the all about reading books. That's where the warning flags went up. It wasn't the lessons. It wasn't the activities. It wasn't, you know, all the stuff in the, in the, in the manual, in the teacher's manual. It was the reading the short stories that was the big red flag for me. That was where we had to pull back and say, okay, she's something's not right here. And that's where we need to, to, to restart. And so I'm excited to get back into all about reading and see if all of this work that we've done is going to benefit us with those short stories. Cause that's really where yeah. I saw the warning flags go up because she can do the exercises. She did the activities fine. She was, you know, remembering the concepts pretty well. That's where the thing is. And I know we're spending a lot of time on, on English language here, but th- this is our big, this is the big sticking point that we've had. With, yeah, this with is a high priority for us this summer. If you listen to the first part of this yeah. uh, summer school uh, episode series, we talked about finding those priorities that, you know, even though it's the summer and we're doing all kinds of other fun things, you know, you still want to keep going with. And this is a big one for us. This we really ours. want our daughter to to feel comfortable reading as she goes into first grade next year at the parent partnership. Absolutely. Um, and, and so, and you know, she's picking up books constantly. She wants to read them desperately. So we're just well, trying to help give her. And we're that. starting to see that happen. Like she picked up the 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 blue book from All About Reading and read the second half of that book in one sitting, like twelve short stories. That's something we'd never seen happen before. Yeah. And it was a singular event. It was a one time thing. Um, but seeing that happen, that was something I couldn't get her to do. You know, the years before. So we're starting to see those like. I think those little breakthrough moments. Yeah, it's a good indicator that we're going the right direction. Yeah. And, and approaching it from several different ways is is helpful. You know, I think a lot of families will say, oh, yeah, we, we just kind of do this one curriculum. And then when we're done, we're good. And um, I think, you know, All About Reading is definitely a more expensive program. Yeah. But the 100 Lessons book, you can probably get that book for sub 10 bucks used. I yeah. bet you. I've yeah. seen it even at Goodwill a few times. Um, and the Explode the Code books are under $10 as well. So it's like, you know, 20 bucks and you can have two other resources that you can use to help with reading. And and so, you know, for us, it's it's not so much of an investment and she's cranking through these other things in, in such a timely manner because we homeschool year round. It really makes sense for us to, you know, we have this extra time, so we're going to take advantage of it. So that's English language arts. So for math, um, last year we finished Right Start Math A. Yep. Um, then we did kind of like a, a brief break. And we did the mathematical reasoning book, which was just, again, the same idea, the same concept of reiterating the same mathematical concepts. It was easy. She enjoyed it. It was fun. We finished that and we went right into um, Math Mammoth. um, Level one. Level one, which was, I think, the equivalent of a first grade lesson. But it had a lot of the same stuff, same ground that Right Start And that was one of the things that we we learned. We've noticed with All About Reading and Right Start Math is they kind of sprawl the grades. It's really hard to like pigeonhole them as just a Yeah, it's more than kindergarten. Yeah. And so like this Right Start was a little bit more than kindergarten and it was more into first grade. So when she went into the, the Math Mammoth for the level one, that first half of that book was fairly easy for her. Mm-hmm. Um, the second half of that, the second book, they, they come in a two book pair. Now, the second book was a little bit slower, but still very brisk. Like we were doing two or three pages a day all the way to the end. And so it only took us about, you know, three, three and a half months to get through that. That is a kind of a review, but then we finished it and we're done. We just finished it this week. Um, you know, I'll make sure to link the, our interview with Maria Miller. Yeah, um, she was fantastic. From, from Math Mammoth. Uh, in the show notes here if you want to go listen to our interview with her it, it's a great curriculum i, I, I cannot complain yeah. it, it is a fantastic book she really understood i have to admit i actually saw the elegance in the in the teaching in the math in the math mammoth book come through when i finally got to the last chapter when we were doing coins she was doing addition of 10 and fives and ones all in her head adding up coins and writing down the right answer. It was She's ready for money bags, is what you're saying. She she is. Um no, no lie. I, I've struggled teaching her 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 coins for you know forever. It was it was a le- one of the lessons in hundred um in the right start. And it was just it was a fa- failure, so I just skipped it. Having 
chapters one through seven lead into chapter eight for Math Mammoth, it was really interesting. It was amazing to see how Maria designed her math program to begin to allow the learner to understand the conceptual nature of what they were doing with respect to addition and subtraction, where they're borrowing and, and giving and taking and trying to figure out ways to group the numbers so that she can make more tens or get everything to tens or, you know, adding, you know, borrowing one here, giving away one here, just like all the little tricks and tools that we were doing over and over and over again. And, you know, she, it, it really clicked at the end and it was a really cool thing to see. I have a feeling right start math B is going to be a very smooth process way, way faster than our right start a because we did this math mammoth in between it. I feel like, you know, we're doing a very similar thing between ELA and math. Yeah. Right start is very analogous to all about reading all about in that reading. it is, yeah. it's very comprehensive. It, it shows the theory behind everything. Yep. It builds a great foundation. And then we've added on these other math workbooks like mathematical reasoning. We've done a, a few other kind of unnamed workbooks too as extra practice. Yep. And then math mammoth um, to give more practice and show something from a different direction. Um, and it's going to really set her up strong for starting right start b so yeah i i i like this i like this you know using this theoretical comprehensive foundation yep. and then building it's just i think it's it's really a good ticket for us it's it's, it's really fitting in her learning style now i can yeah. see another kid who just you know that's true. Her, her learning style she does not like to memorize things it's not her thing she just doesn't want to sit down and say okay i'm going to memorize you know a a b b c c i'm not going to memorize that so she needs to see things from multiple different ways. And get lots of practice. And lots of practice. Hands-on practice. And that's really how she learns things. That's how she learns, you know, when she's playing with toys and Legos. That's how she learns how she's playing games. She wants, she needs to do it a lot. And she gets it, right? And she's very smart and, 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 and you know, she's got all the, all the tools in her tool belt to do things. It's just, that's her learning style. And what is nice is that we've been able to adapt to that. I don't know if she would have a lot of success in a public school system because of her learning style, wanting to see things multiple ways, multiple times. I just right. don't think there's the... They don't have time for that. There's not a lot of institutional patience for her. Hey, I just got 14,000 steps. I need to stop <laughs> That's waiting. how much gesturing he's been That's doing. That's your gesturing. Italian coming out. Yeah, my, my Fitbit just went off. But I was already up to 13,000 today. And people logging at home, that's over seven miles of walking around. Um, <laughs> oh, anyway. I'm only at 12. You're trumping me, Booza. Yeah, I'm, I'm step shaming you right now. Yeah, um, I, I think that it's interesting too, you know, with All About Reading and with Right Start, they're both very teacher intensive curriculums. It is. You know, they need a lot of your time. You have to sit there with them and really teach this material. Whereas um, Explode the Code, Math Mammoth, those you can kind of give a little primer and then they can do a lot of work mm -hmm. independently. So I think it really dovetails really nicely. Um, so yeah, so math, we're, we're going into Write Start B this summer. So for handwriting, um, stay tuned to next week uh, or the week after when we give our review of the Explode the Code uh, workbook, the, the level one book. We're gonna talk a lot about handwriting in there and some of the benefits we've seen. Uh, with choosing that curriculum mm -hmm. and the handwriting with respect to handwriting for the summer you know we will continue with the beyond the code book which we we when we we just perused through it today it has a lot of handwriting in there so yeah, we're going to sure continue does. with that we're going to finish up our Danelian book that we've been doing um for the last four or five months that is yeah we, we practice done. Danelian handwriting and we use a really great it's the it's the only handwriting book for Danelian unfortunately so we can't go and get others the on, the only other thing we can do is make our own mm -hmm. uh, copy texts which is what we are going to do from phrases from books we're reading mm -hmm. maybe Harry Potter I think that's um, what you, you had you had said that you're going to incorporate a lot of the Harry Potter stuff into the handwriting. right yeah I'm, we're going to write cool phrases that she might you know to help her practice her handwriting I, I found a few fonts that look close enough to Danelian um, that she can practice with. But unfortunately, there aren't a lot of Danelian resources out there. Um, I think we, I don't remember where we talked about Danelian. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's kind of like a, it's it's actually, it's the printing that we were taught in the mid 80s. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like it's printing, but with tails on the ends of all of your yeah. letters. And it, it's nice printing. Yeah, it really helps you to move to cursive if you want to later. It's like a step away from cursive. Yeah. So uh, in Danelian, we didn't want to teach cursive right now. We didn't want to teach block printing. We thought Danelian was a good middle ground. And if our daughters want to learn cursive, 
recursive when they're older, then they can do that. So just a very quick primer if you were not familiar with uh, Danielian handwriting. So we're going to continue with that through the through the year with a lot of copy work. Um, we had an episode a couple of weeks ago about our word ladders, which incorporates a lot of writing as well. Um, mm-hmm. I'm also doing some copy work um, with respect to our our fluency text that we will, we're probably going to have a podcast on that in the next couple weeks about the um, Tim Razzinski. I'm probably butchering his last name um, podcast. Um, there's a short bite that we just, we just did. I'll link that in the show notes as well. And we're doing the fluency texts as well, which is a lot of story rhyming songs, old kind of like mm-hmm. mother, mother hen, mother goose type of story, uh, short story um, rhyming texts. We've been doing that. So there's a lot of handwriting that I've been doing with that. And she kind of has like a, a copy workbook now. And we're kind of, and I've been doing that almost on a daily basis where she just does a little bit of handwriting, a little bit of copy work um, on a daily basis now as part of like the morning basket. Now, with respect to science, we're going to continue with the blossom and root space science. We've been missing a week here and there. Um, it's We've been having a really busy schedule for the last three months. So it's going to be really nice to spend the whole summer I'm actually doing the curriculum yeah. once or twice a week. Um, she really enjoys it. Um, it's cur- great. It's a kindergarten yeah. space. It's a kindergarten science module that comes with the, the Blossom and Root kindergarten curriculum. You can buy just the science. We bought the science and nature por- portions both. Um, and it's all about, uh, it's all space. So it's all different planets and satellites. And it's very comprehensive. And so far we're, what would you say, like maybe a third of the way into it? Yeah, a third of the way. And it's it's quite good. What, what I like about it is it's very fun. It's very loose. We have a lot of space in science books just because that's kind of a, a um, an in, in-home interest for both Ariel and I mm-hmm. and just in general. So we're kind of spacey, nerdy type of people. So we, we enjoy that. We have a lot of those resources just kind of lying around the house. So it fits really nicely into you know us just pulling books off the shelf that we already have. And then building off of what you know each lesson is talking about, but also the thing I like about the 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 guide is, you know, she gives you a lot of good interest, good good ideas, a lot of good activities, um, you know, good pointers to videos and whatnot and topics. But it also is, it can also be very open ended, and that just allows us to be creative and fun and and have a, a good old time. We've been incorporating a lot of like play doh and Legos and videos and art. And it's been really nice to be just kind of like very eclectic in that nature around mm-hmm. that curriculum even though it's it's guiding us lesson by lesson it is open-ended enough to have a lot of freedom and to play and fun have fun really doesn't feel like a lot of work for us it's it's actually i a lot of times when we do it i i enjoy doing it because it feels like such a break from what we normally do um that it just feels more relaxing it's more of a re, i think a little bit more of a relaxed environment we just kind of have fun and play while we're learning about space stuff. So she, I think she's been really enjoying that and it's going to be really good to get back into that and get that into, and to move through that a little bit higher clip because it is, it is a fun curriculum and we've been having a good old time doing it. Um, we're going to finish the build your library torchlight around the world study. We are we're, like four weeks away right now. We are four weeks away. I think we've got to finish Africa. So mid June will be finished. Get into Australia, Oceania. We'll get into Antarctica and then we're done. And I think we have about, yeah, she said four or five more weeks. According to our videos on YouTube, we have like nine more weeks, but you know, that's just how we roll. We, we we're, record we're our, catching up, guys. We're catching up, guys. We, we have them in the queue. So keep we almost up with have us. our Europe guide done. Uh, we are almost. like scratching on the doorstep. The we Europe wonder, guide. Ariel, Ariel texted me today. She goes, she goes, you know what? I know why this has been taking so long. It's like 12 times larger than any of the other yeah, guides we've made. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah Matt has found over 400 videos yeah. just for Europe that we've linked in the research guide. Well, you don't guide, realize so. how countries are in Europe. It's just a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's huge. So you got, you got to find stuff for Luxembourg. You can't leave Luxembourg off. <laughs> right. So you know. we're we're just about finishing that. We've been doing this since since uh, last summer. Oh um, so we, we you know we've we've done the around the world. It's been really fun. We're having a fun time finishing it up. But it's going to be nice to finish with that. And you know we're. In the in the fall, we're going to start uh, a combination of Build Your Library and Blossom and Root Prehistory that takes yeah. us from kind of the origins of the universe and uh, all of all of that time period. It goes into dinosaurs, and then it's going to go into early man and all that stuff. So we're doing this major prehistory unit, which we're going to start in the fall and do until the end of the year. Um, we'd, and then the first of the next year, we'll be starting Build Your Library Level 1 Ancient Civilization. So it's going to really move nicely through that history. But this summer, 
rather than start on that too soon or, you know, we're going to finish up kind of mid June. We're going to have a gap. We're going to have a gap of probably a month and a half or more. And we've decided that for at least a, for about a month, about four weeks, we are going to do a Harry Potter unit study. Uh, I asked my daughter what she wanted to do. And she said, uh, even though we've read through Azkaban, she's like, I want to start at the beginning again. So here we go. We will read Sorcerer's Stone <laughs> for like the fifth time. Um, we're going to do that. And I purchased the Build Your Library unit study. And I purchased the, uh, well, and, and we got Waldox, Wizard, and Wands. Um, so I took a look at those. And of course, never, I'm just, I'm never satisfied. Um, I'm feeling a little Hamilton come on. Oh, she'll never be satisfied. Okay, anyway. But. Um, Sorry, I'll, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm just. No theater here. I, there's, there's other things that I want out of it. So, of course, I'm going yeah. to mix it up and make my own thing. Cause I just can't not, it's like in my genes. So, um, we are going to do four weeks on that. We are going to go through the book, do a bunch of cooking. I've got a bunch of supplemental resources for studying the mythology and legend behind some of the pieces in the book and learn more about it. Um, we are also, the Builder Library has a herbology unit study as part of that. Um, and that is a bit too advanced for my daughter. So we're going to change that a little bit and we're still going to do basic herbology, but we're going to focus on... Um, plants, flowers, trees, and seeds. So each week we'll do something different. And we're going to try to do something a little bit more uh, more basic because, you know, she's only uh, going to be a, a rising first grader. So uh, anyways, that's, that's what we're going to do. I'm really excited about the Harry Potter. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, and what I'd like to do is do these month-long Harry Potter studies kind of in between doing the bigger blocks of curriculum. Mm -hmm. I think it's a fun way. I, I might, if this goes good, we might do this again, maybe in the month of December or something when, you know, you got a lot of other things going on and it's a good time to sink into a book and do something fun. Um, I expect that we will have a podcast about what we end up doing. I'm still in the middle of planning it. So it's yeah. a little bit premature for me to say exactly what we're doing. Um, but, I have a really good idea and I've got a couple of books still coming and I will be putting that together shortly. We're going to be doing that in probably the month of July and then we'll come out with a podcast when we're done and we'll tell you all about our experience and how we did the unit study uh, and what worked for us and what didn't. We'll probably do a video on it too because it's going Absolutely. to be, um, it's going to be a big, a big cool thing. I've been waiting a long time to do a unit study for Harry Potter. Our daughter is super duper excited about it. So that's going to probably really, dominate dominate yeah. our, our no, for uh, summer the, for the younger one i think we're going to begin to do the plain preschool uh curriculum this yep. summer when she finishes her first year in the preschool that she's been going to a gymnastics yep, a preschool weeks. um she's been enjoying that she's made a lot of gain you know a lot, a lot of great development there and um now that she's her her big toe is not broken anymore she's able to move around again um she's she's done a lot of great gains she's starting to show that interest in in kind of pre-literacy, you know, pre-learning kind of phonetics letters, starting to play letter games in the car with us and I spy type of things and tell us little stories and favorite animals. So she's starting to get into that, you know, I want to, you know, start doing things, dad. And, yeah. and so we're going to start to facilitate that. And I think we're going to do the playing preschool probably on a weekly basis, maybe two lessons a week or maybe one lesson a week. No, nothing too intense we'll with see. her. It's a lot of just like art and yeah. play. So yeah. very, we're going to be very, very loose with that. Just, um, just starting to kind of fold her into homeschool lessons. She's going to be turning three in a few weeks. And so it, it's, it's a, a good time. Yeah. And it's something that, that I've seen um, you know, every Thursday. I take her to the parent partnership with me. And I've in the last few weeks, I've been maybe a month or so. I've been starting to do a little bit of, of educational stuff while, we, while we're there. You know, she has the patience. She has the little, you know, a little bit more of a stamina, a little bit more of a interest in in, in in what she's learning we've been doing kind of like letter recognition stuff early counting things we play a little bit of games do some puzzles so it's, it's just kind of fun and playful so i've seen her kind of being interested in that and so that's kind of been the cue for us that we we probably need to start to think about what things that we want to start bringing her into and then start to think about curriculum maybe in the, in the next year or so because we did start her sister at was about three and a half four on the uh the torchlight i think pre-k curriculum yeah. was our first thing that we did so we're, we'll probably start with the blossom and root this time yeah blossom and roots a better a better yeah. introduction so we're going to see how the plain preschool goes this summer um also just in general because we're going to have a lot more free time 
um, you know, just I think planning wise, I'm going to be taking them to do some parks um, in the kind of the in the local area. I'm just going to kind of map out if ever I got a kind of a word document going, just doing some Google researching, Google Maps researching on like local parks, um, kind of fun things that I can do with both of them. A lot of picnics, a lot of hiking, kind of flat hikes. Um, and then meet I'm gonna mom for lunch. Meet mom for lunch. You know, you know, seeing mom. You know, once in a while, that'd be nice. Um, you know, we we do miss you now that you're nah. somewhat back at work. I'm only back at work three days a yeah. week, but it has been a big adjustment for the family. It has, man. We miss you. The girls really miss you. I miss you too. <laughs> there was a pause there. No, <laughs> it no. was a pause. He looked at me and went, it was, it was, "Oh shoot, it was, uh, I miss you too." It was more of like a William Shatner <laughs> dramatic pause. Nice, nice recovery. Yeah, very, very good recovery <laughs> there. Um, one of the big things that I that I've wanted to do with with my oldest is start to identify things in the local area, um, specifically trees and plants that are kind of native to the area. And I think that's kind of a big focus that I'm going to have while we go to these parks. Is I'm going to have her do a little bit of tree research and and plant research. That was something that I not only do I want her to know about that, I also want to know about that. So yeah. it's, it's kind of going to dovetail together. And I'm hoping it's, that we'll put that in with the when we do our trees week yeah. of Harry Potter. I really want to focus on the native trees for this area. So she can identify. Just you know, just get the basic knowledge for for her and frankly for us because yeah. I don't even know the names <laughs> of the trees. I'm like, that's a really pretty tree over there. I have no idea what it is, but that's really pretty. Absolutely. You know? So I. I want to be more informed. And then also we're going to be uh, leveraging the YMCA a lot. We, can, we kind of talked about that, I think, over the last couple of episodes. We've, we've referenced that we're, we're back at the Y now, which is nice. It's a nice break. Um, good child care there. gives gives you time to get a little bit of a break, but that's kind of fun there for them. Um, also swim lessons as well. You know, you find your local YMCA. A lot of times they have pools. It's a good opportunity to get those swim lessons in, especially if you're um, you're a family that is around water a lot. It's always nice to have the little ones comfortable with that and, and water safety being, you know, rammed home into, <laughs> into their heads. Um, on top of that, we're also going to be doing a lot of play dates. Uh, we have a couple of friends that we want to catch back up with. Um, and then and play dates for, for some of her better friends. We want to do some more extended play. i um, thinking about longer play dates, longer day long play dates, kind of getting, get, you know, exercising that social muscle again. Um, and then just getting out, I think in nature, I think is another big thing that we're going to be doing a lot this summer, playing outside, getting the pool all fired up and inflated and let daddy, uh, sit out there at four o'clock in the afternoon with his diet Coke and floating around, floating around in my little kiddie pool and displacing a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> not so much anymore. Not, not so much as, as I, I have to. to say, hearing it all out like that, it sounds like we're going to have a really busy summer and I actually think it's going to be light. I, like, you know, that's it's funny compared to what we're doing right now. It the, feels lighter. Honestly, not doing the around the world study yeah. is we probably read we probably read thirty picture books a week with that, and that's not the spines, yeah. and it doesn't include the videos that we watch. And so yeah. for us, that has been really big. Well, and the funny thing you is, you do not have to read that many books. Guys, we just yeah. we do so we can find yeah. the good books for you all. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> if you watch the YouTube videos that we do. You know, we only end up showing about seven or eight video uh, books for whatever, you know, sometimes it may be a little bit more like India. I think had, we showed like 15 or so, but like we read 3X that. Every yeah, we week. read a ton and and we're still going to be reading to them, but uh, not having the around the world is going to be helpful. We're also going to probably finish the space science from Blossom and Root yeah. on the earliest side in the summer. And then we're not going to replace that with any other science until the fall starts. So well, it's it funny, that's kind of sounds like a lot, but actually... Yeah. Some things will be will be ending, and I think overall, because you won't have to be at the parent partnership for eight hours a week, and our little one won't be in preschool for, uh, you know, week, six yeah. six hours a week or something, or or no, it's more than that, it's like nine hours, hours a week. Yeah, um, yeah like it, it'll be and no soccer. Yeah, like we're, we're losing yeah we're a finishing lot of stuff. soccer. Like we're actually it's actually going to be a looser schedule and more on your own timeline when yeah. you want to do things when you want to go to the wire when you want to do lessons. Uh, Mornings will be less rushy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So actually, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be good, and I think we'll finish up a lot of the material yeah. and probably spend a month doing just math reading and Harry Potter, and there probably won't be anything yeah. else that month. Well, it's the July. other thing too is that we've been we've been jettisoning a lot of the books out of the morning basket. And getting them complete, and I'm not moving anything else in. And yeah, so, like, not the, the amount summer. of the amount of daily workload is actually 
you know, decreasing right now. And I'm actually like today I was like, well, I, we finished math yesterday. I took a math break today. You know, maybe I'll take another one tomorrow. Just kind of let her revel in the fact that she finished that. And well, She's we finished, very excited we finished, finished, finished all of our math. Evan Moore books. We finished this, like all of a sudden my little onesie twosie pages that I always normally do that are like five or six minutes here, five or six minutes here. And then we do like the curriculum stuff. You know, that's all disappearing. All of a sudden, like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, like, I, I am picked up, more time. I did pick up some fun books at Costco, yeah. some workbooks yeah. that are, you know, grade one, Brain yeah. Quest, and I picked up another complete curriculum. We're going to fold those in probably in the summer. Yeah. So if our daughter really likes workbooks, she so uh, she loves really colorful workbooks too. So we picked those up because they were, you know, very affordable. And if we want to supplement with some workbooks because she wants some more things to do with her yep. in the morning, then we'll use those as necessary. So yep. uh, it may sound like a lot, but I, I think it's actually, it's not a lot. It's actually going to be fine. We're going to be spending a lot of time with grandma and grandpa too this the mo- summer. The most complicated thing that we're doing this summer is the English language stuff. Like that's the thing we put the most effort in. Like the the right start math, I think that's just going to be easy. Um, right. The science and and thing I would is say we're not going to really push. Yeah. We're not going to go at at a crazy clip either with no. like with the right start. You know, we're 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 going to probably slow that pace quite a bit over yeah. the summer and hit it maybe a couple of times a week instead of every day. Mm-hmm. You know, so it'll be a little bit different as far as pacing goes too. Yeah. You know, I'm definitely, that. and and all about reading as well. Yeah, beyond beyond the reading, I think the most important thing for us this summer is is really the the, the opportunity to play and be out. I think that's really yeah, my main outside. focus. It's been such all, a wet spring. All the other things that we listed are just kind of like, oh yeah, we you know we can do that in an hour. We can do that in an hour. Right, and doing things like doing playing preschool is really about like, um, you know. I think the first lesson is all about like tasting apples and making something out and making and doing apple stamping. It's like, it's just art and crafts and fun things. It's not. And both kids can do that together. And it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of effort for, from, from there. It's not a lot of, it's not requiring a lot of brain cycles for the, for the older kid. Um, the big thing I think is English language, um, getting the play and getting out of the house. Everything else I think is all secondary and we're just going to go at kind of a very comfortable leisurely pace with those things. But everything that we're focusing on, as we kind of indicated last week, you know, we're kind of in the pick one thing that really focus on and then do a bunch of little fun little other things that we're doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where really where we are is English language is the most important thing. You know, reading is the most important thing for us right now. All right. Absolutely. Well, that's what we're doing for the summer. That sounds like a fun summer school. You know. Yep. It'll be a busy, it'll be a busy fun time. Yeah. And we'll, great. and we'll see, you know, at the end of the summer, I'm sure we might do a short bite or something and just kind of wrap up yeah. how things went for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely do that. So let's end it the way we always do. What are we into? Magnetiles that we bought at Christmas have <laughs> made a resurgence in yeah. the last week or two. Yeah. You know how when you, you, you thought like a gift was going to be really great and then your kids played with it for like two yeah, seconds right. and never, and they didn't play with it again. It made you kind of sad. You know, that was magnetiles. Magnetiles are a, a bit on the expensive side. Um, yeah, they didn't know that was a pricey gift. It, yeah, yeah, they were. I got them. I got them on a good uh, buy one get one sale at Target. But they still were, you know, a kind of a pricier, nicer thing. And the kids kind of played with them for a few minutes on Christmas, and then they were just not into it. And the last like three weeks, those kids cannot get enough of magnetiles. They have been building yeah. everything S- with since, them since the Easter weekend when my mom brought the Easter eggs. And she filled them with these, we could only refer to them as the squishies. They're just these tiny these little... little squishy animals, like dinosaurs and frogs and whatnot. And they're like, I don't know, the size of a... Whatever material they are, they like attract like a... every bit of lint and <laughs> dust in the house. Yeah, they're yeah. they're constantly gross. I they're hate these great things. Great Play-Doh picker-uppers. Um, yeah, they're these like little squishy characters. I don't know. They're the size of like a ping pong ball. Anyway... Magnetiles and the squishies have <laughs> formed an unholy union <laughs> in this house where they build giant uh magnetile apartment complexes they're like i don't know they're like renters there's <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know homes for the squishies home for the squishies and they started using duplo characters yep. too and putting them in magnetile yep. houses um they are starting the little to make... one is making giant pizzas with the yeah she's making geometric tri- patterns and stuff she, with them. she now knows square rectangle uh, triangle because yeah. she gets to build them and she gets to make giant pizzas. And, I have to say, yeah. while magnetiles are a little bit more on the expensive side, They're very um, durable. They are extremely durable. Oh I mean, they and they, they have taken a beating. They are solid. They are really solid. So her birthday is coming up soon, and I think we may get some more magnetiles for her. Maybe the car magnetile bases. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we'll link some of the magnetile sets in the show notes if you want to see uh, what we 
but actually it's been a really wonderful building toy and it's challenged them in ways that they weren't yeah. not, not necessarily challenged with something like Duplo. Very, very portable too. Cause I've been, I've been taking magnet tiles with me to school with her and we, we can build that, you know, yeah, because the, they all the because table. they're all magnetic, they'll stick together. They kind of it kind of compresses very easily. Yeah, it actually becomes a very efficient space space toy, and then they yeah. can you know it volumizes very fast. We have a really cool um, magnetile like a, storage like a, bin. Yeah, carrying bin. and the the corners of it unzip and it folds out to be a building mat. So you can actually fold it out and they can build right on it, and then you zip it up and it's a it's a bin. So yeah. we really like that too. Uh, it ended up being kind of a kind of a hit so mm -hmm. we wanted to share that with you because that's what they're into thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey please engage with us on social media join our homeschool together podcast group on facebook and find us at homeschool together podcast on instagram we'd love to hear your feedback questions and recommendations until next time happy homeschooling